Hello, everyone. This is Dr. Spinach. And today I will be talking about how you can use the last nine to 10 days uh, before your FMG exam for your preparation. So it is already, um, I would say, 11 p.m. here, and I'm still dedicated to making this video. And the reason is I just couldn't sleep. I'm already sleep deprived, but I'm still making this video. And well, who am I to make this video? Well, I am Dr. Spinet, as you know me, and I passed my FMGE with 183 scores in my first attempt uh, not long ago. So so I guess I, it makes me a person who have gone through this journey and uh, um, I do understand that uh, that there that there have been a change in pattern when I gave the exam, but uh, looking at the recent questions, this is what I have come up for with you guys who are writing this exam on 20th of January, 2023. So let's begin. So the first thing is you have to follow this mantra that you are going to pass FMGE exam and there is nothing that is going to I'm sorry, I just need to, yeah. And there is nothing that is going to stop you. So the mantra that you have to follow is, I will pass FMGE. Now let's begin. The first step that you need to take is the filtering. So step one of the 10 day or nine day process uh, before your exam is filtering out subjects. Uh, but before we go into this, I just want to mention that I am pretty sure that there are some people who are already in a journey of revision, which is a very, very good thing. So this video is going to help you refine your revision process uh, and focus on things that need more attention in the, in the last nine days of your preparation. And secondly, this is also for people like me who got messed up in the end. It was I still remember it was 18th of June when I was messed up. And that is the time I decided I'm going to go back home and like dedicate myself the last 10 days into, uh, you know, into, into complete, completely dedicating myself into those studies, into studying those uh, 12 to 12 subjects that I read uh, during three to four months of my preparation. Now, so this is also for those who are messed up and who don't know what to do. So I'm here for you and we are gonna figure out together. Okay, so the first thing that you need to do is to declutter your mind and focus on filtering out 12 subjects. Now, these 12 subjects should be the ones that you have already read before, not the ones you have you are starting or you read just once and you're not very good at them. So you, you should know what are your strong subjects, okay? So why have I taken a goal of 12 subjects is you have to understand this, that it is not practical to study all the 19 subjects in last nine to 10 days. So you have to be more focused and you have to, you know, you know, hit the ground, touch the reality that you can only study uh, 12 subjects, 12 to 13 subjects in nine to 10 days, right? Plus you don't have to score, you have to pass, right? So filter out the 12 subjects. Now, what is the step to filtering out these 12 subjects is, well, uh, you, you can choose, so we have pre-paraclinicals, minor subjects, medium-sized, and major clinical subjects. So choose three to four pre- and paraclinical subjects. For example, you can choose anatomy, uh, pharmacology, biochemistry, whatever is your strong subject out of these, like pre- and paraclinical subjects, right? Once you've chosen them, go on to choose two to three minor subjects that are strong for you, like psychiatry, anesthesia, dermatology. So whatever is a strong, uh, which you have already read before. And then choose two to three medium-sized subjects. These include the ones in, you know, here, ENT, Optel, pediatrics. These are medium-sized subjects. You should have at least two of these, right? Even if you don't have, don't worry. Maybe you have done some major clinical subjects here. Maybe you have done medicine and surgery. So, you know, try to equal them out. So three to four pre and paraclinical, two to three minor subjects, two to three medium-sized subjects, and two to three major clinical subjects. These will include, for example, obstetrics and gynecology, PSM, medicine, or surgery, whichever you have done. So filter out 12 to 13 subjects that you you know that you are very good already and you just need to revise them to strengthen your memory, okay? Now, the next thing that you need to do is 
start arranging. So step two is arranging. Now arrange these subjects in the decreasing order of your forgetfulness to them. So for example, we all know that anatomy is a volatile, volatile subject, microbio, biochemistry, all of these are volatile subjects. So these should come in the end. And conceptual subjects like, for example, medicine, okay, uh, let's say physiology, these, these are the subjects that should come in the beginning. So conceptual subjects should be in the beginning of your uh, your last 10 days and the for the subject that you forget should be arranged in the end okay once you have arranged these in the decreasing order of their forgetfulness now step three is the thought process okay so what do you have to do in this well take a piece of paper well take a deep breath first okay take a deep breath and then take a piece of paper after that, list the down the number of days you have. So from today, for example, let's say, uh, I think I'm shooting this on 10th of January. So from tomorrow, you have 11th to 19 days. So that is 19, that is nine days, like nine to 10 days, let's say. So list down 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, until 19, right? Once you have listed down the number of days you have, now start, um, start combining the subjects. So for example, you can combine two smaller subjects in one day, right? And then you can also combine three medium-sized subjects for two days, for example, pediatrics, ENT, um, and let's say ophthalmology, if you've done all of those three. So you can do those three subjects in two days. And then one large subject in one day. Uh, this will be uh, like medicine uh, in one day, surgery in one day, obscine in one day, PSM in one day, so, so, so this is how you need to lay down uh, the subjects uh, that you can combine together, okay? And the subject that you have to give a complete day to read, okay? So write these subjects down on the dates mentioned, but remember the step two. What was the step two? Arranging them in the decreasing order of their forgetfulness. So you have to write the most volatile subjects in the end and you have to write the most conceptual subjects in the beginning. Why? That is because before your exam, you have already read these subjects for four to five days before your exam. So your memory is very fresh at this point and it will be easier for you to, uh, for you to, you know, you know, catch the answer to the question, which has, um, which is memory based and not concept based. So that is why it's important to arrange them in this way. Once you've done that, the final thing that you have to do is execution. So the step four of the process is execution. So take action, okay? Take a deep breath. Once you have completely organized what you're gonna do, take a deep breath, okay? Stick that paper on somewhere where you, wherever you study, your library or your the wall that you study in front of, the study table at your home, okay? And uh, then decide the timing that you're gonna give, okay? Uh, so so remember, once you've decided what subject you're going to do in one day, then you have to execute that. You have to complete those subjects in that particular day, right? And the time. Now, uh, yeah, as I mentioned, it's important that you study in the last few days. You should study, try to study at least 10 hours a day, 10 to 12 hours a day if you can extend it. Because otherwise you won't be able to revise completely all the subjects right uh, I know uh, there are bouts of demotivation where you feel like maybe you might not be able to do it because you got this wrong because you can't remember this but do not get fooled by all of that because no no you your the power uh, you gave your mind um, is the one that mind uh, holds on to so you are the one who's in charge of giving the power to your mind. So do not get demotivated by all of those. Now, it's also important that you just don't sit and keep on reading like without anything getting into your brains, right? So what you have to do is you have to do a quality study. So there, it might be difficult, but you have to push yourself just 10 days of your life and then poof, FMG is done. So do whatever you want to do with your life next. Okay, so, so think of it that way. And well, 
<clears throat> the last thing that I uh, wanted to discuss are some of the FAQs uh, that are most commonly asked. So it's uh, important. So I already discussed about time, right? The other thing is MCQs. So people say that should we do the MCQs or should we not do the MCQs? Personally, I I didn't do many MCQs. So maybe uh, once uh, one uh, like one after the other, one day at a time, uh, you can do 10 to 20 MCQs for that subject, not more than that. So even if you're doing two subjects a day, then you have 40 MCQs, 20 plus 20. Don't do more than that because try to understand we are humans, we are not robots. So you have to know your limits. If you if you expect too much from you, you may not be able to do it. So expect what can be expected from this body, okay? So 20 plus 20, not too much because you're revising your notes as well. Then final thing that I want to mention is about sleep cycle. So try to sleep at by 11 p.m. at the most, right? So I'm not sure what time the FMG exam is gonna be uh, this time, but most probably it starts from 9 a.m. in the morning, right? So you know you need to get a good sleep and you have to maintain your circadian rhythm, rhythm as well. So for that, you have to practice from today itself to sleep by 11 p.m. so that you can and wake up by 6 p.m. So or whatever. So so you have to you have to maintain that circadian rhythm so that it would be the same same when it is the 19th, uh, the the midnight of 20th, basically, right? So these are all the things. Um, yeah, there's one more thing that what you want to do one day before exam. Well, after 4 p.m., shut everything down. Remember, your brain needs time to recharge. So it's very, very important that you do not you do not overburden your brain because once you once you relax, once you feel relaxed, then brain brain recharges. Once you once you have a very good sleep. Uh, you won't believe that the things that you might have learned four years ago may come back to you. And this happened with me. So in my exam, so so please, after 4 p.m., do not read anything. Relax. Talk to your friends. Don't talk to people who are negative. Uh, you know, just sleep, relax, take a massage, whatever is best for you. Right. And finally, step five is breathe confidence. The most important thing is the is to reduce the anxiety of the exam and which can happen if first you take action and second you believe in yourself you should believe that you can do it and only then you will be able to do it so breathe confidence that is very important okay and uh, well that is all about my video today i hope it didn't uh, go um very long but thank you very much for listening to me and if you have any questions just dm me on instagram my id is dr underscore underscore spinach you can also post com the comments um you can also post the comments um on the youtube down below and uh, well that is all about my video and uh, i hope you all make it all the very best with your FMG examinations coming up. Take care and bye-bye.